Welcome to the Lifestream's Enemy Analysis series, where we have been taking a deeper look at the enemies featured within the various trailers for the upcoming Final Fantasy VII Remake. If you haven't seen them already, don't forget to check out the previous two videos in our series before joining me, Kane424, and the Lifestream crew as we delve into the exciting new Tokyo Game Show 2019 trailer. First, let's take a look at the return that we glimpsed of the train graveyard roaming opponent that was featured in the original Final Fantasy VII game. A frightening and surely demonic skeletal formed Cyclops fused into the body of both a warhorse and a chariot, Elagor was a rather intriguing enemy that you could also miss entirely from your gameplay experience. Best remembered because of his possession of the striking staff belonging to Aerith, Elagor's remake incarnation is a chilling interpretation. The most striking difference is within the warhorse portion of the Elagor's body. Whereas before, the warhorse had a long headguard, which looked like it could also be used to strike opponents, the warhorse now possesses a long half crescent horn, making the creature very reminiscent of the Final Fantasy X Aeon, Ixion, or the Final Fantasy VIII enemy, Mesmerize. The main body of Elagor itself now appears to be more as a spectral wraith, providing even more of a chilling feel to this familiar enemy. Elagor now wields a long spear, which we can briefly see used within a magical attack which throws additional spears at the party. One further point of note is the sparks forged by the feet of the horse portion of Elagor, and again during the spear attack. This could hint at the Thunder Elemental alignment that this enemy now possesses, which again also ties back to the new look reminiscent of a demented Ixion. Casually strolling into the church as part of Reno's crew, we wanted to quickly highlight the reappearance of the red-accented security officers, aka Shinra MPs, that were previously featured within the E3 2019 trailer. The last time we saw them, these elite security officers were chasing down the members of Avalanche during a dramatic motorcycle chase segment where they were missing the standard issue weaponry common to security officers, but instead were equipped with explosive hand grenades. This quick new look at a red security officer reveals that they do indeed possess tonfas and machine gun equipment. The close-up also reveals a brand new accent to the helmet we could not glimpse in the previous trailer, further highlighting the red security officer and making them stand out even more from other ordinary security officers. Following on from our previous analysis into this familiar opponent from the original Final Fantasy VII, the Sahagan makes another surprise appearance within this latest trailer by unleashing a magic spell. The frog spell directed at Cloud turns our hero into a small amphibian, altering both his appearance and available attack commands, just like in the original game. You will also notice that the status effect is highlighted within the heads-up display under Cloud's stats. Though we already knew that more of the fantasy elements were going to be kept within the remake, it is fantastic to see these more in play for ourselves. And yes, the mini Buster Sword is incredibly cute. I want a Frog Cloud plushie. Though not exactly a new move, we wanted to quickly highlight the sheer versatility of the Metal Saucers, the new yet familiar enemy featured within the previous trailers. As was previously discovered, the Metal Saucers are able to hover and roam around a battlefield, utilizing laser attacks on top of a grappling and disabling maneuver. The latest glimpse of the Metal Saucers reveal that they are capable of projecting images, in this case a hologram, as we witness when they project President Shinra, Heidegger, and their words to the party. It could be very interesting if the Metal Saucers were also able to use holograms within its battle manifest, perhaps confusing the party with fake versions of itself or even as a means to highly increase its evasion. Regardless, the versatility of this opponent is certainly surprising and worth this mention. This almost crab-like robotic opponent is a new inclusion into the Final Fantasy VII universe and is definitely something that hasn't been seen before. Possessing three central sensors in order to track and target opponents, this new enemy is outfitted with heavy machine guns which it can fire rapidly at the party. The rotating belts, as seen within its undercarriage, seem to be this opponent's weak spot, whereby damaging it could stagger the robot enough to make it immobile. This enemy also utilizes the multi-limb targeting system, as we get a faint glimpse that the legs are also available as a target. New surprises are a boon for veteran players of the original game and will lend even more excitement to familiar areas. And speaking of new surprises, did your jaw just drop during the crazy laws-inspired motorcycle skills? 
what looks to be an extension of the motorcycle chase seen from the E3 2019 trailer, where we previously witnessed the red security officers chasing Avalanche, we are treated to a quick glimpse at a new character introduced into the story. A member of Soldier, as expressed by Cloud and denoted by the icon on his sword, and the quick glimpse of his belt, it looks like this new enemy has been sent into the fray to finish the job and stop Avalanche directly in their tracks. Fans of Crisis Core will of course have immediately recognized the familiar looking sword, as it is the standard weapon that we saw utilized by Zack as a member of Soldier. Though the quick glimpse doesn't allow us to see much else, we can make out that the Soldier is outfitted in their own style, though the familiar shoulder guards, as utilized by the security officers, seem to be incorporated into this distinct outfit. Facing members of Soldier is definitely going to up the dramatic events of the game. Armed with a wide assortment of projectile weaponry, including machine guns, rockets, and a series of chain guns which provide this opponent its namesake, the 100 Gunner is a squat yet highly maneuverable piece of machinery, which was encountered in the original Final Fantasy VII game during the events within the Shinra headquarters. The remake version of 100 Gunner is another fantastic recreation with a few noticeable additions. Whereas it used to have two, 100 Gunner now has four central arm units. Two of these arms appear to house its chain gun weaponry, whereas the other two now house a new laser beam move which we witness rapidly tear through the floor. The version number, as number 5, is something that the original did not possess. Whether this could mean that the party could face other versions of 100 Gunner throughout the story, or whether it is simply for aesthetics and world building, remains to be seen. One nice throwback to the original game is that the 100 Gunner seems to be out of control as it slams backwards before firing its new laser attack, perhaps alluding to the stance change that the original could do when it had taken enough damage. We'll close part 3 of our enemy analysis by looking at the infamous Turks. You can check out our upcoming in-depth frame-by-frame analysis for a more deep look at the character model changes to the Turks, so we'll jump right into our usual enemy analysis and attack focus. Utilizing incredible speed and maneuverability, Reno makes his presence known during his very first encounter with Cloud as the two immediately go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. The lightning quick speed move, or flash step as it has been dubbed, is very reminiscent of the Laws vs. Tifa fight from Advent Children. The ability definitely plays into Reno's capabilities and role as the quickest member of the Turks. Reno's weapon of choice is of course his short staff, which can also be electrified in order to electrocute and paralyze his opponents. The trailer also provides us with a glimpse at a new move following on from the Electro Rod, which is an electrified ground attack resulting in an explosive which propels clouds skyward. Though we would have loved to have seen more, this short glimpse really excites us for this first battle against the Turks. Right on the heels of Reno's reveal was of course his friend and companion, the close-ranged fighting powerhouse that is Rude. Rude has several moves at its disposal, which show exactly why he is physically strong and capable. The defensive stance which we see on display expertly blocks the swings of Cloud's Buster Sword and easily mitigates the physical damage dealt to Rude. This is coupled by a pushback maneuver which interrupts Cloud's barrage of attacks, leaving a small opening for Rude to launch a counter. But it is the next scene which is just as incredible as we witness a new move on display as Rude swings him in several 360 degree turns before launching him directly at Aerith. Following on from the grappling moves that we have seen from opponents such as Apps and the Scorpion Sentinel, it comes as no surprise that this versatility and moveset has been rolled out to other enemies featured within the game. Just like when the Scorpion Sentinel captures Cloud, disabling your control of him and forcing you to switch to Barret, in this scenario Cloud being grappled sees your control switch directly to Aerith. It will be interesting to see whether this grapple maneuver can be countered or halted in any way. Regardless, they bring yet another level of excitement and strategy to battles, forcing you to think fast and switch between the characters in your party. Wow, there was just so much packed within this trailer, but that was our quick analysis of the enemies featured within the Tokyo Game Show trailer to the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want to be notified when any of our new content drops. If you love what we do, you can also support us by becoming a patron. And don't forget, you can join in with the excitement over on our Discord, our forums, 
and also feel free to leave us a comment down below. I'm Kane424 for the live stream. Until next time.